meditation like we learned yesterday with Greg and I actually noticed you two were already practicing and Jerry and I had this conversation earlier about you know really just touching your sternum or your heart space and that's just that reminder to pull us back in if you don't it can be pretty simple this whole idea you know peace begins with me and uh, how we can live in this crazy world that we're experiencing in, in a peaceful way and just something as, as uh, seemingly small but very powerful as tapping here or touching here just brings us to that heart space. And so I ask us to just, uh, you know, tap into your heart space, your sternum just a couple of times and focus your energy there, close your eyes and take a couple of nice deep breaths and envision your breath as it comes in and out of your heart and you feel the, the love that you truly are. The power that you truly are. For you are a being of infinite love and infinite possibility. Be still and breathe into this truth. of God's perfect love. within this sacred space. Your heart knows, for your heart will guide you, lead you, and direct you to your greater good, your greater purpose. Take a nice deep breath and ask your heart <coughs> your most sincere <coughs> question and take a moment to listen
what is our Creator's will for me? God's will is peace. God's will is joy. You are that. This vortex of joined heart energy with the intention and the desire to be peacemakers, <coughs> to be lovers of humanity. <coughs> this is the energy that will transform our world from war to peace, from sickness to perfect health, from poverty to prosperity, and to the total experience of love in all beings. And for this we give thanks. believe, now I don't have a joke today. I had a really good one last week actually, but, and Julia, I thought of you, I was like, God, I think Julia would have liked this one. But uh, I, I didn't really have time to pull one together today. But anyway, uh, I was thinking about, you know, here we are Sunday. And my gosh, what has happened on this planet since Friday, okay? <laughs> gosh, it's amazing. Uh, for at least the right past three days have been historical, to say the least. Um, we put a president into office, uh, inaugurated President Trump, which, um, wow, 
You know, I don't think anyone was more surprised than he was that uh, he was uh, there taking the oath of office. And um, God bless him, you know, it's, uh, I really, uh, we, I taught, had an uh, opportunity, I know Greg had touched on this on Friday night at the event, but um, I, I think that one thing that uh, is so important, and Greg really feels strongly, in, and I do as well, even though I may have had a preference, okay, or a favorite in the race, okay, um, it is what it is. And it is so important for us to honor this, uh, this man and his position and support him in all ways. Because we are, as he said, throughout this world, even though people might not like us for certain reasons, <coughs> behind the scenes they know that we are the way showers. And they know that we are founded on spiritual principles. Not religious principles, but spiritual principles that you know that for equal rights for everybody uh the right to you know be able to be who we want to be religious freedom uh freedom of, of expression um so many things of uh, being able to really live our lives freely and i know some of us would uh, beg to differ and say well those freedoms have been taken away and maybe they have been to a degree but I think that the one, when that new president puts his hand on that Bible, it is to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And our Constitution is a very powerful uh, uh, document that really um, does give us these rights and these purposes. So we know this by now, okay? I don't think there's anyone in here that, uh, you know, as, as I, you've heard my spiel, I don't claim to be uh, any more spiritually superior or knowledgeable than anyone who comes here because really you guys have done the work, you know, you, you come here well tuned. And um, so I think we all understand and know the power of, of consciousness and intention and energy and how powerful that is and, and what, how we can really ground this peace that we all say we want in the world is by extending love even when we might not want to. And uh, being willing to recognize when I'm going down that path of judgment and anger and upset that that's not a path that's helping me or you or anyone else. So how can we really hold the greatest uh, degree of love for this? all these changes? Like Greg said, I mean, there's so many changes among us right now. I mean, from you know, uh, economically, politically, um, our, our level of peace or lack thereof in the world. Uh, I mean, this world is really a tough place to be in right now. It truly is. So we all need a little help, okay? We, it's, we're all here to help and support and nurture each other. Well, a couple of things that um, I found interesting is uh, let's go back to Obama, President Obama eight years ago. When he was elected, there were many people who made it very apparent uh, that they were not going to support him. And not only that, they were going to get him the hell out of office as fast as they could. Uh, well, that didn't happen. Whether you liked his politics or not, I think as a human being, we can all agree he was an impeccable man, a wonderful family man, a beautiful being. So eight years later, those uh, same people, many of them, are now um, all up in arms because there are marches for, uh, may, I won't say against Trump, but maybe not supporting his vision and mission. Uh, and they're up in arms and we've got to come together and we've got to do this. Well, yes we do. And it's kind of like, but I, there's a part of me that was like, well you did that eight years ago to this, that party and now you don't deserve it. But, you know, I, I go back to what Michelle Obama says, you know, when someone, when they go low, we got to go high. And that's not just politically, that's in life in general. You know, yes, we can justify and rationalize our anger and our upset and our reason to be separate and angry and do that all day and night long and we can find reason to be there. But the truth is, you know, if we really want to stop that cycle, which is really what this is about, these cycles that keep coming back, you know, we have to be the change. We, somewhere, someone has to step up. 
I think the greatest service uh, that we can give to the world is to support everybody. Uh, you know, wish the best for everybody. I know that something on um, Facebook, okay, someone said, you know, wishing him, uh, our new president, ill will is like wishing the pilot of an airplane, you know, to crash the plane. You know, that's insane. You want everybody to land safely. We're, we're really all one family. So I think if we could just take that into our heart and, and put our, even though we might not agree on issues, to be a, willing to lay that aside. The fact that, as I said earlier, millions of women and men around the world literally came out yesterday to, to march and stand for a new earth, a new world, a world where you know the environment is considered, good food is considered, uh, equal rights for all are considered. This was not a, a, a march or a protest, I think, against anybody. Uh, maybe some people went with that intent, maybe not. Um, but the real purpose from what I've gathered and the people I've talked to was that this is the world that we all want, where everybody is honored and respected and, and cared for. So uh, it's not necessarily a political issue, but one of people coming together in unity and peace and saying, this is the world we want. And uh, wow, when you get that many people together, and I saw so many people, I was reading uh, last night and this morning on Facebook, all these people are coming together and they're like, this is just the beginning of this movement. And so it's, I mean, when you see that many people come together, wow, what's, you know, what, that is good news to me, really good news. You know, make America great again, you know, it was, it's already pretty great, it is great. But I like uh, some people, at the at Greg Brady thing, they had little badges, make America kind again. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to get a little kinder. Uh, uh, I think everybody's a little irritated, you know, and agitated. I know I've been. Um, make America uh, love again. You know, that's that's what we're here to do is to love and and be that uh, presence of love in every situation and condition. Well, as Greg said, and as I mentioned here, you know, every moment is a new moment. Truly, I mean, like he says, we're at a place we've never been before. So. <clears throat> and we think that maybe we're in times that are unusual. Well, they are unusual. I mean, they really are. A lot of things are happening. But on the other hand, uh, I was reading something from Franklin Roosevelt, who, you know, what's this, 80 years ago? This, the point in history at which we stand is full of promise and danger. The world will either move forward towards unity and widely shared prosperity, or it will move apart. So, you know, this gig's been playing for a long time, okay? There's been this uh, anticipation of financial collapse, global uh, wars, things for, I mean, millennia, thousands of years. This is a cycle that's been going on. Back to the whole idea of cycles. Are we going to continue that or are we going to, you know, move forward in a, in a decision of unity and peace and prosperity for all? And I think that's what's so exciting about this Women's March is, is it's like everybody's welcome. No one's exempt. And let's, uh, so that's how I think we're going to stop that cycle. We're going to create that new paradigm of a world where everybody matters because everybody really does. One of the greatest, um, one of my greatest friends who has left the planet a few years ago too, a spiritual leader, Ma Jaya, a uh, Hindu woman whole story I could tell about her awesome woman crazy woman crazy in a good fun way but uh, she was so um, open-hearted and giving and she was all about take it she said there are no throwaway people and I saw her in the throws with the the throwaway people the despicable people that nobody wanted to be near uh, she really opened my eyes during the AIDS crisis uh, where she would you know, it's a little shocking. I don't know if back 20 years ago any of you all ever knew anyone who had AIDS, but when you see someone at the last stages of that condition, it's not a pretty sight. Uh, and uh, lesions and skeletal bodies. And, and the first, you know, when the first room I walked in and saw that, I was like, oh my God, you know, this is, wow. And, 
but she, I'd see her stroke these men and these women's face, and she'd crawl in bed with them, and she'd kiss all over them. And, you know, at that time, it's like, don't go near those people. Don't breathe the air, you know. And I saw that love and that acceptance and compassion to where it, it was so touching for me, I was able to do the same thing. I was able to make that uh, connection with those people. So, um, you know, she was a big advocate and her spiritual community, community, Kashi Ashram, continues that mission and that vision. They have orphanages in Africa. They are still big in the, AIDS is not over in the world, by the way, in case you didn't know that. United States, we've got it somewhat leveled off, kind of, sort of. But go to Africa, it's a whole different story. Other parts of the world, it ain't so good. But so they go, they still serve these people. But the people that, um, you know, we think are throwaway people and of no value, it's time we really value and honor those people. And um, it's, uh, <coughs> so uh, the Course in Miracles says, okay, so, we don't have to go out here, in other words, and get everything really, in other words, comes from the vibe I carry into my life and how I choose to see the world. And it doesn't mean that we don't advocate and we don't march for the change we want to see, but ultimately it's about making peace within my own heart. And these patterns or these cycles that I was speaking of, you know, I believe we can step off that hamster wheel and, and make another decision, you know, make a choice point of like, no, we're not going to continue perpetuate the separation and the division in politics or in the economy or whatever. I'm going to take a new stand. And I think the more people that do that will uh, be what changes the world from the experience of hell to, to true heaven and unity. But, uh, you know, we, the Course of Miracles says the world is not meant to be fixed. It's meant to be forgiven. So we always do it backwards. We want to fix it first and then forgive it later. But really, I think our clear and, uh, you know, like Greg was talking about going into our heart, I think we can go into the world and be of greatest service when we're clear, the more clear we are within our own selves. So do the inside work for, uh, first. Heal your own heart, see the world forgiven, and then be led from there. Because if I'm seeing all the crap going on, which there seems to be a lot of it today in the world, uh, if I'm focusing on that and then trying to fix it, I'm just perpetuating the problem. Be centered, go in your heart, and be led from that space. That's where the true change will happen. Of course, we talk about division. We've all heard the simple, short, powerful statement, united we stand, divided we fall, and how true that is. And um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the reason why the world lacks unity and lies broken in, and in heaps is because man is disunited with himself. So again, heal thyself first. If, if I don't do that, that's my message in this life. Boy, I can tell you, I'll be the first to admit it. You don't have to tell me because I already know it. Uh, it's, it's always coming back to me. I get caught up in this drama, pull it back, pull it back. And I think the more we can do that and support each other in that process, that's the way that we can bring our true purpose into being. Well, um, you all know who, uh, um, uh, well, let me back up on this. There was a gal that, a couple of gals, and I was so thrilled to see, and they couldn't be here today because they were driving back from Nashville and DC, but there was a whole crew <coughs> that came to this, um, conference from Alliance of Divine Love, which is, how many ministers do we have in here, by the way? We got several ministers of the Alliance of Divine Love in our organization. The Namaste Center is under the umbrella of that. It's an interfaith, interdenominational <coughs> ministry. But uh, there was, uh, the president of the organization came from DC, and another crew from um, Nashville came, and then Chattanooga, so it was really wonderful to see them all out there, and they really wanted to be here today, but they, uh, they really wanted to get on the road because of the weather. But uh, as Faith, one of the gals, she uh, sent me a note this morning, and she says, you know, the, referring to what Greg says, uh, it says, our answer to this one question holds the key to our thinking. It's the reason for every decision we make, the, the basis for every choice, the heart of every challenge. What's the question? Who, are we? who am I first and then who are we? 
<coughs> and then what's so important about that, and basically supporting what I've already been talking about, is that when we answer that question, this creates the lens uh, to which we see the world. How I see that myself is how I see the world. So in the meditation, I uh, asked us, who am I? I am a child of God. I am divine. I am perfect. I am love. And when I affirm that in myself, bring that into my heart mm -hmm. and know it, then that's how I see the world. Uh, if I see myself as a victim or as uh, separate from source or separate from each other, I see myself separate from the world. I see my, that's how I see the world. So it's so important that we all really tune into that knowing who am I? I am divine. And feeling that, I, you know, tap into your, tap in, just tap here. Anytime you're feeling a little uh, cruddy. You know, I really expected, you know, uh, last night I came home, I was like, Ugh. Uh, I did, I had a little shot of bourbon before I went to bed, and thinking, okay, I need this, because I'm just like, it didn't help. But anyway, um, but uh, I was like, okay, how am I going to, I was I was so tired last night, I was like, how in the world am I going to make it here today? And then, not to mention, i got to get up two hours early, because i got to write a talk. And um, I feel good today, I have no idea how or why, but I do, so thank you, Spirit. But I was also, yesterday in the meditation, I, I was really paying attention in this morning, just doing that little tapping and that remembering. And, um, you know, it's just the, the Course in Miracles says the body is incapable of being tired, but a mind of constant beliefs and judgments, that makes us really tired. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, there's no tiredness mm -hmm. in that heart space. <laughs> so I just wanted to go there and breathe. So I feel really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, uh, Greg. And, and it's, it's the truth. It really is. We're incapable of being tired. Got to really watch everything we think and say and do. Well, um, uh, you know, I love The Course of Miracles, and I love Paramahansa Yogananda. And um, I'm, I just get all these cool things uh, from in my email and Facebook from Yogananda and <laughs> Every time I'm like, yeah, 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 that makes so much sense. And this morning I, I woke up this. <clears throat> Always remember, this earth is not our home. <clears throat> our home is in God. Your life will be visited with too many terrors, which you will not understand if you look to this world for, for fulfillment and peace. Rather, look through deep spiritual effort in meditation. Become so anchored in God that you will be able to stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. If tragedies are to become a part of your dream of mortal life, the Lord reminds us, become anchored in that which is changeless. That is the unfailing love of God and the Lord's omnipresence that is never more than a thought away from his children. He is ever eager to bless us with his love, security, and the sweetest glimpses of his never-failing divine care. In your daily meditation, continue to remember all who are suffering in this tumultuous world, that they may find refuge, peace, and healing in the one who has watched over us for incarnations and who yearns to see us awaken from the dream of delusion to the light of his unfolding presence. <sighs> that just feels so good. It's like... Yes, this world is challenging. Yes, it's a lot of crap going on, a lot of struggle, a lot of pain. We're a thought, a breath away from finding peace. This world is not our home. We can navigate in this world in peace if we choose to, but it's a constant decision and knowing and faith and confidence. And the more we just tap into that, it, it just strengthens that in each and every one of us. Do you, do you all know who... I love this kid. Uh, he's no longer here on the planet either. But do you remember this little beautiful being, Matthew Step Stepanek? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he he was actually uh, he became very good friends with President Carter. Oprah had him on her show. He had a a uh, what was it? A rare disorder. It was called uh, Dysar Automatic <coughs> Mitochondrial Myopathy. And the kid died at 13, but he lived in a wheelchair. Uh, had very limited capabilities. You know, had a breathing tube, uh, 
strangely enough, I think he had a couple of siblings who um, died uh, from the same thing before him. God bless his parents, his mother, for being able to, to take care of these children like that. But he, uh, he was an American, you know, here he is 13 years old, and he was the cutest kid, and he was so smart and so tuned in. I mean, this kid was a saint on the planet. And it, they say here, he was an American poet who published seven best-selling books of poetry. Before his death, he had become known as a peace advocate and motivational speaker. So there again, you think your life sucks. You know, this kid, look what he did by age 13. He's got all these great books, and he just changed people's lives. And I can remember seeing him on uh, Oprah. That's where I first saw him, and then on other shows. But uh, he had these, you know, he, he didn't see himself as this suffering being in this wheelchair. He knew his, his days were numbered on the planet. He didn't expect to live as long as he did, 13 years old. Uh, but you would have never known it by his attitude. His spirit was so beautiful. And, um, you know, when, like I said, when we think that we're, uh, that beautiful video that Greg showed yesterday of that young man who was found in a shoebox in, in Baghdad during the middle of the war, disfigured, and here he comes up and now he's, um, you know, touching people's lives all over the world. Uh, it's, you see, you know, every part of his body was not right, according to our judgment anyway. But he, he just made the best of it. Sang and touched people's hearts, and now he's a motivational. Same like this kid. Well, what, uh, a couple of his quotes, which are just so beautiful, and I can see him. You should look him up on, online, on YouTube, if you have a chance, or just do a Google search. And if you haven't seen him, Maddie, M-A-T-T-I-E, Stepanek, S-T-E-P-A-N-E-K. Um, beautiful being. But he says, while we are living in the present, we must, we must celebrate life every day knowing that we are becoming history with every work, every action, and every deed. So what a way to live consciously. It's not, the, it's not the years in our life, but it's the life in the years. What are we putting into every moment? You know, it's, who cares if you live to be 100 if, you're, if your life's not that uh, meaningful, if you don't have purpose? What about those, that, those people that Greg was showing that lived to be a zillion years old. I mean, they were like, the one, was the one person was at least 250 years old uh, when they died? I mean, you know, it is possible. It is possible, uh, we, you know, we are unlimited. So, and, and to live a fruitful, healthy life. But these people really, what's the, what was the common denominator? They lived from love. They lived, you know, they naturally did what we're speaking of here, you know, tapping into that. Um, we all have that potential. They, um, of course, made just basic good lifestyle choices too. Nothing radical. They didn't go to the gym and pump iron necessarily, but just good food. Oh yeah, the one lady that, that he showed is like, oh, how did, what's your exercise routine? Once a day. Oh, it's okay. I'm taking that one on. Yeah, there you go. I feel better. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> So it's, it's just, it's, it's all what we make it, all what we believe, all what we tune into. Um, the answers are there for us. It's just whether or not we choose to use them. Uh, a couple more quotes that I'm going to close with is from Maddie. He says, unity is strength. When there's teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And that certainly uh, is the example. Uh, we're a small but mighty group of people here. A lot of people came together to make this weekend a, a really great weekend. I mean, a lot of selfless uh, giving and time and energy. But it's, it's really this whole, I believe this whole march for the world is about living in a society in collaboration and unity, not on us versus them. You know, how can, what can I do to bring peace and healing to the belief in separation, not to continue it? And, um, my closing statement from beautiful little Maddie is, even though the future seems far away, it's actually beginning right now. Yes. So what do we choose to make it right now? It's a new day dawning, and it's all fine and dandy, and so it is. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.